All right, so what do you think of this end game? Draw, white pieces win, black pieces win. And let me actually show it to you from black's perspective. Just take a look. Black pieces have a pass pawn, outside pass pawn. Um, for the white pieces, they have a pawn majority. So what would you rather play? What would you rather be? We could do it. We could do it today. I think we could do it today. Actually, let's do a puzzle battle. Uh, that's, that's the main question. White pieces to move, guys. Okay, you'd rather be black outside pawn, black outside pawn. So you'd rather play d6 and get that pass pawn? Right, give it one more minute. Think about that. All right, guys, let's go over this. Look. When we talked about king and pawn endgames, the outside pass pawns were a huge asset to have. Because at the end of the day, the king had to go after the pawn, and then it was too long to come back and so on. In rook endgames, they, they tend to be not so powerful. Why? We just put the rook behind it, and that's it. The pawn is not going to go anywhere. Even if they get it all the way down, unless they have some specific tactics like checks or, or this idea of the skewer, they're not that powerful, right? So. In this one, definitely is better for the white pieces, but we have to know the right technique. And for this one too, the driving principle is your pieces working together. These pieces are on the same side of the board, while the, white, the black pieces are far apart. They cannot coordinate their forces to help the pawn promote, right? So again, maybe I'm going in this game, I was playing the middle game, I was thinking of the rook end game. And if I just think of that, I know I'm gonna have a better rook end game where if we're not familiar with it it makes no difference one way or the other well now we know our pieces better it's easier for our pieces to get coordinated or not that could help me decide if i should go for the end game or not now with that said what should be our first move i see f5 i'll go rook a6 d6 we got king d3 prevents rook a4 okay so you're getting ahead of the game so look the main thing here is really visualizing d6 like what do you think would be a problem with d6 if i just play d6 and if we find any problems then we try to solve them so what could the problem be all right king e8 absolutely okay and then the root getting behind okay good so d6 I, I gotta deal with this and i gotta deal with this so that should give you the answer first move someone mentioned it is indeed rook b8 check king g7 this, by principle that we already know, making the king go away, it, it makes perfect sense, right? And then I want the idea of going rook e8. So that pawn is going to fall probably, and I get the pass pawn afterwards. Now, with that said, um, we still have the problem of the rook getting behind the pawn, right? So even if I play rook e8, rook d1, so I got to do something to prevent that move. Someone mentioned king d3 to prevent rook a4 and, and so on. Well, in reality, the move that is so difficult to find is king d2. Guys, this move seems so computer-like or computer moves or like we could never think of them in a game. Well, if we get to see them more and more and more, we're going to think of them. Again, king d2, they don't have these annoying checks. We had a, I think we had an exercise last time where we had to use it. It wasn't so complex, but we had to use the idea. So king d2, now rook goes to a4. And of course, now we continue with king c3. I don't want him to go to d4 and do the same thing. Just paying attention to those details. Either you learn this because you study it like we're doing now, or you mess it up, it gets you in trouble, you're never going to forget. So king c3, rook a1, let him get the pawn. We don't need 20 pawns, just one pass pawn. So they go down to push, and of course, now we have the idea that you had. So rook d1, now should we take the pawn, should we push? King c4, king c2, what would you guys play? Yeah, king c4, king c4, skewer? What do you mean skewer? Okay, why not rook b7 instead of rook e8? Why not rook b7? Well, rook b7, oh yeah, okay, rook b7, the king comes back out and it defends, right? So we gotta. Same principle, keep this king out of the picture. So, rook d1, 
Uh, hola, 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 hola. So now guys, King C4, that's it. I don't need any, I don't need anything else. This pawn is the only thing I need to pass it. That's it. Even if I lose everything, but I get this pawn that is so close. If I get it to promote, that's it. So King C4 was played. There you go, King C4. Perfect. Then check. What do we do? King B5, King D4. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So with that in mind, King B5, excellent. All right, so that's it. We know what we want, very easy to come up with the moves. Do we really want the pawn? Well, if it's easy to capture, we do it, but if not, I know what I want. So they go after the pawn, and now this is where, where it gets a little bit tricky. Instead of the natural looking move, King C6, they said, you know what? I'm gonna go Rook D8, hold on, take care of my pawn, and then I'm gonna collect this one. Imagine having what we have right now without having to worry about this pawn. We're not concerned about it, but hey, it's even cooler if we don't have that. Um, they could get us in trouble in the future, right? So Rook D8, I'm gonna get that pawn if you don't do anything. They pushed it, we take it. Nothing else works, guys. Rook A1 is not gonna make a, it's not gonna make a difference. So take Rook D4, King goes back to B5. Then they took on F4, and again, critical moment, I want to take my time here not to blow it. I've blown positions like this. We got to learn. We got to learn. Yeah, yeah. Many times that's, that's enough. Okay, now we, push, now we push the six. Anything else? King C5. Well, here, let's not forget the tactical ideas. The very first... Rook's uh, endgame session we had, we were focusing more on the tactical part of it. Here, look at this. I have King C5, D6, or the same Rook E8. Rook E8, the problem is they could get behind the pawn, but now I have King C5 with a tempo and defend. This one is falling. So in, indeed, we played Rook E8. They took another pawn, remember? And I like this exercise because it proves we don't need 20 pawns, just one pass pawn, that's it. So they took on g4, <laughs> uh, and now again, instead of taking, we calculate. This is looking ugly, they're about to take this one, and many times, if we are left without pawns, the rook would not be able to keep up, right? So we don't have time to play rook e7, plus if we calculate, these two are close enough. So d6, pawn takes, pawn takes, this pawn is going to promote. Only thing they could do is get behind it. And now, what should we do? Take your time. And I'm asking you, what, what would you do, even though it seems simple? Because it helps you guys remember. Try to think of it. Don't just be here watching. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not going to forget. Uh, remember, try to pretend like this is your game. Yeah, King C6, you're on point. King C6... And the one thing that I want you to not forget, guys, you won't be able to convert this if you lose both pawns. So make sure you don't lose the, this pawn, okay? Because this rook is ready to get sacrificed for this guy. So king c6, and don't forget to hold on to this pawn, okay? One of the two pawns. So check. Now, what do we do? Even this at this point, it seems simple. It could get complicated. What do we do about this check? Do we go away? Do we get in front of the pawn? Do we go behind the pawn? Welcome, welcome, welcome. King d5, king b7, king d5, behind it. <laughs> well, the one thing that I'm gonna ask you is this. Those of you who said king d5, are you aware that you automatically think of this resource? Them just going back, waiting for you to push the pawn and then skewer. I'm not saying this is wrong or right. Did you consider it? Because this is what we're looking for. Ideas that come to us automatically. Yes, you considered it. Perfect. All right. In the game, indeed, king d5. Now, rook c2. Pawn to d7. My rook is defending it. And then after they took on h2, what do we do? I told you, if you drop the pawn, <laughs> I'm ready now to just go. And I don't think you're going to win this. And even if you do, it's going to be so tricky. So what do we do? <laughs> yeah, 
That's what we don't want. Ah, genius. Genius, 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 genius. That's the move. Lucina, the bridge, and then we block it. So yes, we dropped the pawn, but this is gonna promote no matter what. If check, we block it, and boom. Guys, again, I've said guys 20 times, but it's important. These little tactical details could save so many games. So we gotta be familiar with them, okay? The bridge, the bridge, there you go. So going from the very beginning, oops, sorry, from the very beginning, here we go. Uh, rook b8, why? Because I know this pawn is not a big deal. Mine is really close to promotion, but I need this king far away from the action. And um, also we have this idea of collecting the pawn afterwards. They don't have an easy way in. This in itself could get you many end games won. So king d2, why? They could use the king, they could also use the rook to go behind it, so I need to prevent it. King d2, now this is another thing they want, king c3, they want to go behind the pawn, no big deal. My king is nearby, check, I go towards the pawn. Now instead of coming back, I use my rook, that way I, can col I could collect this pawn. They gave it up. Now let him take, I don't care, I only, I only need one pawn, d6. Then king c6, don't drop this pawn unless you have a plan. King d5, be aware of the skewers, but I already got it. So you see, I'm thinking, do I go away? Do I go in front and I block the pawn? Or do I go behind it, hitting the rook? Automatically, this should come to mind, but then automatically, we should think of the bridge. So king d5, d7, bridge, and that's it. Now, let me see, when I play d7, does this make any... No, it doesn't make... It doesn't change anything. Yeah, and I'm about to promote. And I got this pawn anyways. All right, guys. Uh, let me see. King d2. Okay, what if king e2 instead of king d3? King d2. King d2 instead of king d3. Okay, let me go back. King d... Okay, king e2 instead. All right, let's take a look. Let me see if I can activate the engine. Wait. All right. So we have king e2, king d2. No, it's the same thing. You see, same principle. King e2, king d2. So we're just preventing that root from getting behind it. This one, it seems more natural because we are getting closer to the king side, right? But no, it's the same thing. Like We know we have to control it here. We have to control it on d4. So king e2, king d3, we got the same thing. So not a big deal again that's why here is more about the ideas just getting the ideas you were mentioning b5 you were mentioning rook b3 now to be able to convert this end game we need to remember the importance of the active pieces active king active rook we need to remember the idea of the pass pawn uh, my mod <laughs> mentioned the move b5 extremely important it is not the first move but it's important for this end game because I get the possibility of the pass pawn, right? And the last thing that no one mentioned was the this idea of um, having your pieces in harmony. Your pieces need to be working together while making their pieces be un, uh, unable to do the same thing, right? So at this point, at this point, we got black king on the king side, black rook on the queen side. I want to keep it like that. And in the, at the same time, I need to make sure my pieces work together. So with that said, b5 is present, it's not the first move. What could the first move be then? Okay, king d6, king d6. <laughs> that was your first guess. <laughs> now let me see, let me take a look. Because um, This one I think I remember what, what it is, but I wanna double check. I don't wanna give you, I don't wanna waste time. I think I can, I can play it. I can, I can make it work, I remember it. Resign. <laughs> Not yet. King f4, interesting. All right, welcome aboard, welcome aboard. Uh, offer draw is better. <laughs> and then if anything, we, we resign. All right, so look, let me tell you what I remember and then we go over the book to make sure that I'm right. Don't say rook f6. Well, it's rook f6, guys, it's rook f6. Now, if I'm playing this in the game, I gotta look, consider everything. Even moves the seem counterintuitive, we gotta consider it. It's not enough to be like, oh, rook f6, not good, I dropped the pawn. You have to really visualize it. Especially, especially if you already consider the move b5. 
B5. Now, B5, if they take with the pawn, I get a pass pawn, right? So this is very, very interesting. Imagine B5, pawn takes, then I get to play B4. I don't want to push it right away because it's weak, they capture it. But if I play B5, pawn takes B4. We know, we've talked about this, protected pass pawn. This is a long-term advantage. Then I could even do this, so I would consider it. Now, the problem with that move right away is that they could just take with the rook and you didn't solve anything. So if I play rook f6, if the king goes and takes the pawn, fine, I'm going to play b5 now. You already know what happens if they take with the pawn. You already know what happens if they take with the rook. I'm going to be able to collect on f7. At that point, I have my king collecting on e6, collecting on d5, and I'm going to have king in the action plus rook. This king is going to be far away. Guys, rook endgames are so complex. You have to use these guidelines to guide you through it. You cannot pretend to have everything on the control all the time. It's just like, hey, you know what? I remember two pass pawns on six could be better than the rook. A pass pawn is all I need, an active king. So these are the things that we have to really have on the control. Now, the main question to you is, after rook f6, if I'm the black pieces, either because I trust you, sometimes your opponent doesn't really calculate, but they're like, you know what? If they're giving me the pawn, it's for something. Let me just go back. So either because of that, or because they know endgames, they might just avoid it and go king g7. What do we do at that point? Exactly, and that's something else that we have talked about more in the middle game, but sometimes before we go on to something, uh, to something else, change the move order, see if it works. And hey, and that's why we're doing this. Like probably next time we do something like this, you don't see it either, but then on the third time, you're not gonna forget. Yes, we push the pawn, guys. So we got rook f6, if king g7, then we got g6. Why? Because now I get to collect these pawns. Yes, they get a pass pawn themselves, but it's one pass pawn, it's isolated, and we should be able to control it. We are not scared of, the kind of this kind of pawns. If you have gone through all of the endgame sessions we've had, you should be okay with these. There you go, base pawn, perfect. All right, so going back from the beginning, um, rook f6, they have the option to take on g5 or just go to g7. King g7, g6, f takes, rook takes e6, and again, this is an easy win now. I'm hitting everything, like everything collapses for the black pieces. Now, going from the beginning, if they actually take on g5, now I get to play b5. Again, they take, I'm going to secure long-term asset and all of this is going to is going to collapse king d6 and, and so on so we have rook c7 for example then rook f1 look same pattern opposition same thing that we know from the one rook checkmate i think that was lesson 99 uh, 18 19 something like that so king g6 check go to the edge far away from the action and then king f6 and everything collapses that's it i'm taking on f on f7 if they trade rooks, is the king and pawn endgame. So anyways, let me see if you have any questions. If they take with a rook, if they take with a rook. What do you mean if they take with a rook? Yeah, 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 okay, wait, 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 wait. So we already know what to do if they take with the pawn. Now, if they take with the rook, what do you think we should do? Think about this one. Exactly, just you take the pawn, just take the pawn, you take the pawn. So we take on f7. Yes, they could now take on b2, they could take on a5. If they take on b2, we simply collect on e6, and then this one collapses as well. Guys, at that point, we're going to have an extra pawn, it's passed, and that in itself is not a big deal, but this king is out of action, it's, it's caught. Same principle that we talked about in the Philidor, in the Lucina. So if they take on a5 instead, then the same thing. Look, every time you have the opportunity to kick them out, you do it. King h6, rook to b7. I'm protecting the pawn. I could play rook b6 if it's necessary. But my point is, before I play rook b7, I kick them out. That extra tempo could be crucial. So after rook b7, king g5, give me the pawn, b4, rook a4. And again, of course, I take the pawn. This should be an easy win, but notice how 
this can little by little is getting back into the game. So we have to still be creative. I told you those four principles plus a little bit of creativity. So after King D5, we got pawn to A5 and then main question for you. Should we trade or should we push? So you have the option to trade and then you're left with a pass pawn or B5. You give your opponent a pass pawn as well, but you got two. So what should we do? And take your time, okay? Take the pawn, push. <laughs> Let me see what the engine says. Engine says... Mm, no, no, no. Yeah, I thought that we could have chances if we took two, but no, guys, you cannot, you cannot. Yeah, you have to push, you have to push, you have to play B5. Again, this decision is easy to make if you already went over the Lucina, the Philidor. So, of course, they pushed, then we got King E3 just getting close, and now what should we do? We get to this point, we might have missed this, that the King and Rook could work together to collect on D4. What should we do? What's the move? All right, so look, this one, the first thing that should come to mind is, okay, I'm, I'm in trouble here. I'm dropping this pawn no matter what. What other guideline could help me in this endgame? Well, it's all about the pass pawn. Who has the, closers, uh, the closer pass pawn and who has the two pieces working together? This is more important than anything else. Coordination of your pieces. So the move here is just rook a7, rook behind the pawn, we know that, and then after they take, king goes to c5. Important, we go to c5, I want to control this rook because I know they want to go behind it. So I'm attacking this pawn now, king goes to c5, most likely they have to go back and defend the pawn, or a4. So rook a4, Oop. okay, you saw rook a7, and again, it's just listening to the principles that we already know. Now. What do we do at this point? Again, easy to mess up. You don't know how many times I have messed up end games like this. I'm already winning and I feel like I'm under control. I play too fast and all of the hard work goes away. So what should we play now? And always keep in mind the possible pawn end games. So I'm always at this point, we had a, vid a video uh, recently where I kept reinforcing that. I'm playing this thinking of the king and pawn endgame that I could get. If I could trade rooks and get into a one king and pawn endgame, perfect. Okay, push the pawn, king b6. Mm, b6, was b6 okay versus rook a7? Okay, let me see. So instead of rook a7, b6, uh, let me see. I'm just a little bit concerned about this pawn giving them the chance to do that, but maybe there was no difference. So look, we have... No, you were right. No, no. In this case, there's no difference. So king c5 gives you four points of advantage. Rook e7 gives you four points of advantage. And b6 also gives you four points of advantage. So at this point, as long as you remember the main principles, and you don't make a silly mistake or a huge mistake, you should be fine. It's difficult to, to mess this up because the pawn is so close to promotion because your pieces are involved. So anyways, rook a7, they took, king c5, rook a4, and now instead of pushing, and by the way, pushing is winning. Yeah, pushing is winning. Rook d7, cutting off the king is winning. But the move that they played in the game was actually king b6. Give me this and let's walk into a one king and pawn end game. So, Rook goes away, the pawn is falling no matter what, take with the king, and the last thing that you have to remember is not let the king get involved. So king goes to d4, Lucina, we talked about this on Lucina, king is, uh, rook c7, and that's it. This is an easy win now. Guys, I'm not going to do it, but if I show you, this is already winning by a lot, and if you're doing this on your own, you should convert this against the engine. Set it, up, set it up against the engine, see if you can convert it. Or you could do it even from the beginning. You know the right technique, play it against the engine. The engine is very good at defending, but very straightforward. But again, if we play this fast, 
it's very easy to mess up, especially if you're in time pressure. And don't forget guys, when we get to end games, at least that's my case, we're very low on energy, we're low on time. So we have to be able to make these practical decisions quickly. Yep, the bridge and everything that comes with it. So let me just go all the way from the beginning. It seems like a mess, this end game. But if we remember the idea of your pieces working together, right? King f6, rook f6, just trying to get the, keep the skin away and get the pass point. 